Hey, if you watched my last video, you'll know that I'm here in Paris. Now, yesterday I went to Roland Garros, but today we had an even more unique experience where Adidas invited me to a top secret location to visit their Adi house. Now, this is a venue where all professional athletes that are sponsored by Adidas go to pick up their kit. So in today's video, I'm going to show you behind the scenes of what it's like in the Adi house. You'll see insights into the footwear and apparel for the French Open and Wimbledon this year. And if you hang around to the end of the video, you'll see that I got to interview an absolute tennis icon. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before heading over to the Addy house, I had a special delivery to my room from Adidas. They had had a pair of Stan Smiths customized for me. They had an artist in the house previously customizing shoes for the pro tennis players and they really kindly made me a pair with a tennis ball and my initials. Because they look so nice, I was too afraid to wear them to the Addy house. I didn't want to ruin them. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should wear them or if you think I should keep them on display for my YouTube backdrop. Anyway, after this, we walked over to the Addy house. Now, this was set in a location very, very close to Roland Garros. What Adidas do around the Grand Slams and some of the big events in the tournament calendar is they rent a house very near to the location for two to three weeks. Now, this includes the week of qualifying as this is where all of the players rock up to the house to pick up their kit. This is not only a chance for the players to pick up their kit, but it's also a chance for them to meet the team at Adidas and to hear more about the clothes and the footwear that they're going to be wearing. Now, because we went to the house after qualifying had finished, pretty much all of the players had already been and gone. However, you'll see later in the video that I got a chance to meet and interview one of the most famous Adidas athletes. As you can see, this house was kitted out beautifully. Really cool Adidas branding all the way through in such a beautiful house. The house had really nice gardens where there were chill out areas and meeting areas. I did see in a couple of videos previously that there was a table tennis table there. And to be honest, I was a little bit gutted that that had gone as I was really keen to challenge some of the other content creators. What's really nice about going to these events is having the chance to meet other tennis nerds like myself. And the reason I use the term tennis nerd is you probably recognize the main man from YouTube. Jonas from Tennis Nerd was there. I actually met him last week at another event in Paris and he is a really cool guy. It was really nice to talk tennis with him because he's clearly super passionate about it and knows a lot when it comes to tennis gear. So be sure to head over to Tennis Nerd on YouTube to subscribe if you haven't already because he's one of the best in the business when it comes to racket reviews. Anyway, enough about that bromance. There were some other content creators there as well who you might recognize. So if there are any that you recognized, let me know who you spotted. So after a tour of the house, we had a chance to sit down with the product managers at Adidas. Ocean Hunt and Wen Hei Li were really good at taking us through the footwear and apparel for the French Open and Wimbledon. I won't show you the whole interviews as there's a lot of information, but what I will do is highlight three points that were interesting to me. The first was the Paris collection, and this design was called Claymouflage. You'll notice that the colorway is like a rusty red color, very similar to a clay court, and that's no coincidence. The inspiration came from a match between Stefanos Tsitsipas and Novak Djokovic at the French Open, where Tsitsipas actually fell over on the clay and his white t-shirt got covered. Now, normally in this situation at the change events, a player would take that t-shirt off and change it for a fresh one. But because Stefanos was so in the zone, he kept his t-shirt on and quite a few pictures were taken of him in that dirty t-shirt that the back of it actually became inspiration for the design. So you'll notice in this range that all of the gear looks like some has been rolling around in the clay. The second part of this inspiration came from what Novak was wearing. Now, Novak actually started the match wearing a white t-shirt and he actually went down in his match against Stefanos. And what he did after losing the second set is he changed his t-shirt from a white one to a red one. After this, Tsitsipas actually said that Novak was quite hard to pick out against the clay with that red top on. So with these two things in mind, this is where the Claymouflage design was born. The next really interesting thing was the Wimbledon range. We were really lucky to see this before it came out. As you can imagine, it's quite hard to be creative when you're really limited with colors. As you might know, at Wimbledon, you're only allowed to wear white clothing with very minimal branding. So with these limitations in place, Adidas have been really creative in the textures that they put into their clothing and the way that they tailor them. And with this being the Wimbledon collection, they've taken inspiration from Savile Row tailoring. One of my favorite tops is the seamless tee. This one had a beautiful cut. The top, which is the seamless tee, so it's uh, created with a seamless construction. So it's this tubular tube with absolutely no seams. 
uh, creating zero distraction, freedom of movement. Um, but you'll also see, uh, when you look at this, you'll see this beautiful technical heraldry graphic. So these, this graphic that you're seeing that's intertwined into the material uh, is actually a reference to the gates of Wimbledon, uh, the lines of the court. Um, and then you're also seeing these ribbed zoning for breathability. So really, it's an absolutely stunning piece in terms of uh, hand feel and breathability. They've also got a pair of shorts made out of seersucker material, so you can see where tailoring comes into play. What was also cool was that in the women's range, they designed the inner shorts underneath the tennis skirt to add extra protection, as last year there was a breakthrough for women's tennis, and Wimbledon for the first time allowed women to wear different colour shorts under their white skirts. What Adidas have done is added extra protection in these inner shorts, allowing women to still wear white shorts underneath so that they can be less self-conscious on the court and more confident. This iteration, of course, looking at made with a lower carbon foot footprint, we have to look into the pattern efficiency overall. So you're seeing these beautiful referencing of pleating, uh, but really the standout piece for, for here is really the tights that are underneath, which is this beautiful interlock with a raised jacquard and this super, super soft hand feel. Again, having the uh, a mesh gusset underneath as well. And, uh, you know, um, as we know with the regulations this year, Wimbledon have changed around the color of panty. And um, for us, we still kept that clear white, but we're actually working and will be providing all of our female athletes with uh, period proof um, tights that are in white. So really standing behind uh, the message that all players are equal and not trying to highlight who will be wearing it during the ovulation cycle. The final thing that Oshin and Wen Hei Lee alluded to was that there was going to be a big revamp for the barricades as it's coming up to the 25th anniversary. So I'm really looking forward to seeing these. After we got to spend time with the product managers, there was a little bit of time for some lunch. And believe me when I say this, the lunch was incredible. We had meze platters and desserts. It was really, really nice. And after this, this is where the special guest arrived. Joe Wilfred Tsonga, one year after he retired at the French Open, is back in a role as a commentator. Now, before the introductions and interviews, I was lucky to be stood right next to Joe Wilfred Tsonga, and we had a little chat. I asked him a few questions, one of which was, are you enjoying your role as a commentator? And as you can imagine, his answer was that he'd much prefer to be playing than commentating, but he's enjoying the challenge of this new role. To be honest, it must be brutally tough for these players that have to make that decision as when to retire. Obviously, Roger Federer had to make that decision late last year and Rafael Nadal is in the process of making this decision as we speak. The amount of time and energy that these players have put into tennis, it's consumed their entire lives and they've made many sacrifices. So I can't even start to imagine how difficult it would be to make that call as to when to stop. Because quite frankly, Joe Wilfred Songa could still compete with lots of these players on the tour. Anyway, that discussion is for another time. I got to spend five minutes interviewing him. This was a really fun interview. Songa was a great guy, really easy to talk to. I think he was hoping that I would interview him in French, but unfortunately my French is pretty bad. Now, I won't post the whole video here as this video is already pretty long and I'm sure you guys have got other things to do, but I promise I will post the entire interview very shortly. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see that one. At the end of the day, Adidas gave us another little surprise, which was a really nice touch. They had one of their tennis tees embroidered by hand with my initials so massive thanks again adidas really nice touch so i hope you enjoyed sharing this unique experience with me let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see the full interview that i did with joe wilfred songa and if you have any other questions about anything that you saw in this video if you enjoy this sort of content be sure to subscribe to the channel as there's actually one more day that i've had on this trip that i haven't shared with you yet so thanks as always for watching i look forward to seeing you in the next one take care